So we, we looked at the, the top and the bottom of the blue chip forecast uh, uh, panel. So that's uh, kind of think of that as like the, the high end of reasonable and the low end of reasonable. And at the short end of the curve, at the you know three month, there's you know maybe 60 or 70 basis point difference uh, between those two. And obviously that, that gets a lot bigger as you go out to the, the 10 year. So think of that as like a, a spread of two or two and a half percentage points on the interest rate. Um, so these are not extreme scenarios. These are higher interest rates that we looked at and lower interest rates in a meaningful amount. But this is not the kind of you know scare uh, you know hard landing scare scenario so these are not four or five percent these are more say on the uh, on the three four percent range that you're looking at okay let's get to it what happens to the deficit is it a blowout can we afford it uh it, you know it's interesting because initially not a whole lot right with higher inflation and higher interest rates go to you know typically go together at first revenues go up Right, so spending goes up, but so too does revenues, and we've seen that. Right, revenues for the Treasury have been very strong over the past year, as you know, inflation's been high and nominal wages and income growth has been strong. So initially, it's not a whole lot is the answer. The challenge is that as in, as inflation and interest rates remain high, the Treasury debt starts to turn over, and we start replacing lower rate debt with, with higher rate debt. And, you know, over the 10 year horizon that CBO looks at, it gets to be a meaningful impact, you know, into the trillions of dollars over a 10 year horizon. So what, for example, happens to net interest payments as a percentage of GDP? And the way people would think about this is out, out of every dollar of spending, how much is going in the worst case scenario, Phil, towards uh, interest payments? Right. No, that's exactly the, the you know, an important way to look at it as in such as the carrying cost or the flow cost of, uh, uh, of the debt. And they can, you know, they can double as a share of GDP. You know, so think of that as, as the burden relative to the size of the economy. Those can double. So it's several percentage points of additional carrying cost of, um, of debt by the end of the 10 year window. Now, you know, look, interest rates are still low by historical standards. So even an additional one or two or three percentage points of GDP going to interest service is not, you know, that, that is, you know, again, pretty modest relative to the overall size of the debt. And, you know, that's not the, it's sort of not a crisis, but the, the punchline is that, you know, by the end of 10 years, higher interest rates will really have a meaningful impact on, uh, on the fiscal situation. And Phil, it's Kelly here, so maybe if I could put it this way, it would be to say that higher interest rates are already either crowding out federal spending on other uh, areas of the budget or we're having to borrow more in order to keep that from happening. Is that right? No, that's exactly right. And that, that becomes a, a rising challenge over time as more and more of the uh, federal, um, you know, uh, spending will be devoted to net interest payments and not and so it's not available for all the other things that um, you know that, that Americans expect out of the federal government. Phil, did you model in QT or quantitative tightening or is this you're just taking those forecasts and going with it? And I guess my question becomes and I know you can't speak about hypotheticals. You're like censored from speaking about things that aren't necessarily law yet. But the idea that the Fed will be shedding or no, no longer buying billions of assets every month of treasuries. Um, is that something that's going to put upward pressure on rates? And is that something you modeled into this? Or if not, is it something that's going to end up making the rate outlook worse than perhaps you modeled? Okay, yeah, no, important questions. That is not um, in our, you know, in, in the exercise that we did, but only to the extent that is to which it was in the, the blue chip forecasters uh, thinking you know, roughly a month ago. Now, it's going to be important. And if the Fed accelerates its QT or accelerates the interest rate hikes compared to what people might have thought a month ago, and just, you know, listening to Jeff Lacker, that, that does seem to be on the minds of many people, um, that, that would, again, have a, mean a more meaningful impact with higher interest rates feeding into, uh, into interest uh, payments. I mean, in some sense, if people thought that QE mattered, and, and I think uh, it did, right? It, helped uh, housing market and helped support activity, then it should be that QT matters as well. And, and we will look right. at that. And we haven't done it yet, but we will, we will look at that over time.